Hello everybody, JT Bear coming at you today from the tiny little greenhouse in Clean Valley Farms. As promised, I want to show you how my initial aquaponic system was set up so that I didn't have any pumps or any real plumbing and it used zero electricity. That's the most important part of this. Zero electricity aquaponics. Check it out. Stupid simple. Alright. So, basically, y'all know my belief that anything will work as a uh, fish pond, providing it's clean to begin with. This is not what I actually started off with. I started off with a kiddie pool, that kiddie pool to be precise, that was a kind donation from the neighbors, but I have since outgrown it and it's become a dog kind of watering pool. Anyway, moving on. And above the kiddie pool, suspended on, I believe, a plank and a couple of buckets, I had, as always, a series of Folgers cans. Now this is actually a big part of why the Folgers cans are so so much a part of my aquaponic gardening is because they were there at the beginning and well I'm stubborn and unlikely to change so they'll be there at the end. Anyway, what I did was I took a quarter inch drill bit, just popped a little hole in the bottom of the Folgers can there. Now I put it a little bit up from the bottom because I wanted to leave just a little bit of water here after it all drained out. I then went to Walmart and got some standard airline hose. Now this is also, you know, roughly a quarter of an inch. Conveniently enough, it fits right into that drilled hole. Now I didn't have my uh, liquid rubber yet, so I put a little rubber cement around there just to kind of give it a bit of waterproofing, but it was sitting over the fish tank anyway. Now what this does is that gives you the opportunity to take your hose and put it at whatever height you want it to drain from in your Folgers can. You want it higher up, just twist it a bit. Want it lower down, just twist it a bit. Okay, pretty simple so far, right? Next, I ran around my yard and grabbed really seriously anything I could that I thought would uh, fill up the container and allow room for roots, because like, really, I didn't want to spend any money on this at all when I first got started. I kind of didn't believe it would work. But I'm well past that now, aren't I? Anyway, so I filled these up. And to this day, you can still see some of the original plants from my aquaponic garden still in their Folgers containers. This English mint, for example, joined us, went straight into the Folgers can, has been there ever since. Granted, it's been cloned many, many times, but this poor hurting little oregano plant hasn't been getting much water, but I figure, you know what, I'm going to put these Folgers cans back in. It gives a little more aeration to the water down there for the Highlander, and I kind of miss the oregano, so with any luck, I can bring that back. Planting into these is incredibly simple, you know, you fill it up to whatever point with your rock stones. I do recommend the clay pellets. If you're going to spend a little bit of money, spend it on the pellets. Um, or even, you know, pea gravel. But, you know, whatever you're going to fill it with, I recommend, you know, about halfway, whatever. Wash all the dirt off your plant. You know, obviously not into your fish tank, but wherever. Try and get as much of the, the soil off the roots as you can. It doesn't really matter for these systems, though, because the soil all gets caught in the rocks on the way down. And then top it up with whatever you're using. As you can see, I stopped just a little bit below the top on these. Right? Still with me? Stupid simple, right? Okay, next step. Didn't have a pump, didn't really have plumbing, because I don't think little hoses coming out the bottom of a Folgers can counts as plumbing. But, you know, I suppose technically it does. But to me, it really didn't. I think uh, most of us born before 1980 know what this is and probably have one in the house. This was my watering system. Every time I came into the back, I'd give the plants a little bit of water. It would drain out the hose into the fish tank, which of course oxygenated the water a little bit, provided some filtration. All the basics of the aquaponic system are now in play. It's not automated. It's not super efficient. It's not huge. It's not pretty. But this is essentially an aquaponic garden and it uses no electricity. 
Remember, we're not talking about everything behind it here. We're just talking about the Folgers cans and something to hold the water with your fish. If you're looking to get started in aquaponics and you want to grow some sturdy herbs, I, I really recommend this is the way to go. There are lots of different companies out there making similar plastic food safe containers that you can repurpose for your garden. Doesn't have to be Folgers. I'm not exactly promoting them. They just, well, they go on sale a lot and they're the only plastic coffee containers we have in town. So the real question is, as primitive as this is, does it work? And I guess the answer is, this is what I started with three years ago, and this is what I'm working with now. Now there's one aquaponic system here, another aquaponic system over here, and I want to get acreage so I can build an even bigger one. So I think I'm going to say it worked well enough that I'm sold for life. So there you go, a really simple way to get started at aquaponics that doesn't use any electricity. I know a lot of us who are trying to live off the grid don't have any to spare. So there you go, a little manpower, woman power, a little people power, and you can get the job done. It's as easy as watering your plants. So that's it for uh, JT Bear right now, coming at you from the Clean Valley Farms Greenhouse, and uh, have yourselves a fantastic day.